very long task list that you can start putting together. Uh, but with like any tasks or any ideation or anything, the key factor is prioritization. The value is in the prioritization and oftentimes that's missed or overlooked uh, in many places. Prioritization is key because you can only do so much. So if you can always execute on the most higher priority tasks and you update the priorities effectively, then, then at least that helps you to not waste time in tasks that are less, less valuable. So there are individual tasks, but you need to combine, compose those also a, a little bit of bigger packages uh, to, to, so that you, you look more of, okay, let's not just think things, this task individually. We can start by listing different tasks and things that we need to do, but okay, let's see if we can package them in more, um, like not like not to the project level, but more of a, a manageable and measurable uh, bigger pieces that can be then looked in a, in a less uh, detailed level. So defining an objective first, looking at some of the tasks, looking at different things and defining an objective, what do we want to create or improve? Or what do we want to validate? Or what do we need to, what is the objective? And to prioritize this, there's a, this, uh, um, a simple way to do it, like thinking of, okay, how we have our objective defined, uh, what is the impact score? Like if we accomplish this, how big of an impact it makes to us or to our customers or for our progress or whatever that impact, how you define it is for you and how easy it is for us to accomplish this objective like how fast it is, how little it costs money, we can do it ourselves, we don't need a partner for it, whatever the easiness means, but this just helps to get a very clear perspective of how to do the prioritization. What item are we looking to improve? So it has to have a name, a target, uh, a, a specific form so that we know what we're talking about and what is the value of being improved. So if there is no value that is being improved, how, do, how can we improve it even? So we need to be able to measure what that value is. And, and, and that way we can then check and evaluate our progress. What is the target? So if, if, if it's like, let's improve our conversion rate from, uh, from 2% to 4%, that's like conversion rate is the item, value is the conversion rate. The current starting point is two, and we want to get it up to four. So that would be the target from two to four. And then output. So now the output would be, we have a documented that, that this, this uh, conversion rate is now four. So that, that's it. It can be as simple as that, or it can be the whole funnel. We want the objective is improve our final overall conversion rate from from one um, percent to three percent so while you may think like getting from one percent to three percent is not that big of a thing but it's actually three x it's three times more so these are these are the types of things that you get really good perspective when you start to involve actual numbers and measures in context of just not just doing things having logic in place how to prioritize having numbers in place to measure if something gets improved or in fact doesn't get improved. These are not opinions, these are not speculation, these are the ways to actually do the validation because if you don't have this, you only have your gut feeling. And while that is very important and it's very useful, that can't be your only tool if you want to build something seriously. And once you learn all of this, your future business doing this again and again will become so much easier. And then also finally, what is the initiative? So this is now then the more details of actionable item, the tasks, and uh, how do we divide responsibility inside this objective? Who's going to do what? I'm going to do this, you're going to do that, and, and, and so forth. So this is the general prioritization visualized that we just talked there. Uh, whatever the target is, 
which one of our objectives or which one of our tasks gives us highest impact towards what we are trying to do. And on the other side is what has basically no impact at all, even if we are successfully completing it, but the outcome most likely through this exercise uh, is, going to be, is going to be meaningless. And then of course it's a ratio between that you can put from one to five, the likelihood, or you can put from one to 10, what is the likelihood of the impact. And then the other dimension is easy to implement, difficult to implement. So here you can look at um, uh, that if it takes us significant amount of effort, but it also has a high impact. Now you have certain, certain uh, score for that. If it's very difficult to implement, but it has no impact either. So now, of course, that is a thing that you can totally ignore. Of course, these are theoretical things again, but the fact is that if you can't imagine something is doable in theory, then for sure it's impossible to do in practice. So that's how the, the theory helps. Um, but through this exercise, now you can prioritize. And because like the fact with any task list, with any objective list, with any project list, with any feature list, whatever you keep piling into to-do list, the fact is you never get to accomplish all of them. Why? Because either you are not good enough to generate enough inventory of things that you could be working on if you would have more resources or then you are not effectively using the resources that you have. There's never a situation where you can come up optimal amount of tasks and you have optimal amount of resources to execute on all of the ideas and tasks in an effective manner. So what ends up happening when you do enough of both, building the list, prioritizing them logically and effectively and have limited resources is that you automatically have only best things that you are working on because you only get to maybe execute on top one, top five, top ten objectives, tasks, features, whatever those may be. But unfortunately, even in, 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 uh, in this case, the prioritization itself is very poor in many places. And I can, I can name <laughs> big organizations, I can name public organizations, I can name private companies, startups, many places, community efforts uh, where the, 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 the potential of prioritization is lost. And basically there is no any kind of logic applied to prioritization. Perhaps voting, which is group opinion, but it's still an opinion. Uh, instead of having even a logic behind like, okay, let's vote, but everyone think of their vote through some logical framework, how you consider it. Highest priority items, let's try to find them through what would make the biggest difference to you or to us or to customer and would be easiest to accomplish. So this, this uh, works for, for many things. So here's a, a, a Canvas tool to help kind of get a sense, so, so we, we, we create these templates and points so that it's easier to visualize. It, you can see that you don't have to write them in extensive detail again, you can just make them understandable for your own team. But it also like gets a sense that, okay, I could make this into a form and I can it fit my Google spreadsheet or whatever you may want to do. And actually we have that as a tool as well. So as a reminder to Oscar here, Let's share that tool as well in a, in a Google, Google tool format uh, for, for, for the audience. Um, but then, then this type of thing helps to kind of get a sense of relief that, okay, we can do also this, building these objectives um, more with the help of uh, guiding, guiding templates. So this basically then uh, describes this, this, each of these columns a little bit more detail, but, but it's pretty much the, the things that we already covered in addition to having the, the owner 
uh, owner identified and uh, and some of the key challenges that uh, that that would exist to also kind of see uh, what are the different different parts that we could be facing with uh, this objective and how could we overcome those. And if you have a lot of these and you keep re uh, coming with the same challenges, you can also cross-check this with the, the, the SWOT tool and what are the, the weaknesses and, and, and threats and strengths and, and so forth. So you start to get a sense of how these different tools also can uh, work together. So at the end of the day, then you will have something like this, uh, uh, a more kind of uh, logical way, a more valuable list of things because the prioritization is the key and the logic behind the prioritization is the key to actually have a sensible list of items to work with. Without this type of prioritization, Unfortunately, the lists are just long and people anyway execute either how they feel, what they think, uh, what feels more fun or exciting for them, or just from the top of the list, depending who the person is. And that's not a very smart way to allocate resources. So something, something else is needed. So the same applies to product feature prioritization in a different way, just changing the, the terminology. What makes users happy? So it's the same exercise <clears throat> to help go along with the value proposition canvas and the validation exercise. But again, before going, okay, let's go validate this and this and this, and we have 100 things to validate. You can do your own exercise simply because you are seeing the inside of things. Not only what makes customers happy, but you also should have to be able to build it and deliver it and maintain it and support it. So now you may, even if there is something that makes customers very happy, but it's just very slow and costly to implement. So now you want to say, okay, let's put that for the future when we want more resources, or we need more validation for that to commit so much resources and time to build that. So let's prioritize the next item that is perhaps not as making users not, users not as happy, but still making them happy. But at the same time, it, it only takes us half a day to put it out there and validate. So, so this is uh, a feature prioritization. And uh, this is one of the uh, very recent images that, uh, that uh, was shared online by Gartner. And this is, this is just to help to kind of uh, uh, visualize uh, the types of things that happen in, in, uh, in, uh, in a context of, of operations in a startup at different phases. Uh, so this from Gartner, because this is of course not, not only, only for um, startups, this is more for generic innovation development and, running in any, anywhere, but this goes very nicely hand in hand with our the three key levels of our startup development phases, which is the formation, uh, validation and growth. So this basically shows that in the design thinking practices and looking into design thinking tools and other methods, we have covered the, the, the commonly known, the commonly used or the, the hidden gems that has beautiful logic behind them that have been proven to, to deliver success. Um, and, and, but you can also, if, even with this terminology, design thinking, if you do a Google search with image search first, you can see tons of canvases, tons of different tools. But the key is that don't get lost with the tools because that's why we do this whole uh, curriculum, uh, is that, that you need to capture the terminology, you need to understand the key concepts behind that, and then you can use whatever tools you feel most comfortable uh, using, but you should not be lost and you should not let the tools drive you, but you should know why the tools are created and drive the business and the logic and even cross-use different tools, whatever you like the best, but you should understand how everything comes together. So. If you don't have the holistic understanding or the view or, or the way to uh, 
um, acquire that understanding and knowledge, then, then you will definitely get lost with tools and all kinds of different things. And this is exactly why we have created the startup development uh, open framework and we can attach all these different things like hanging them. And these have similarities, but looking from the operational perspective. So design thinking, practices, concepts, model for formation. We have certain set of tools. We have resources, YouTube videos, but you can also Google for more. But don't lose the sight of what are the targets. Then is the validation phase, very much about the Lean Startup, but other practices in addition to that. That alone will not get you there, uh, but it's one of the most comprehensive there, but then there's a lot of supporting other tools. And Agile is when the operation is like how to manage the product backlog. And we cover now for the sake of getting these things started already here, product backlog, how to do prioritization, and then from there, all the other terminology with being Agile as an organization. But for example, this doesn't really help you to, how do you grow an organization? How do you build uh, the team? Uh, how do you do multiple agile teams? Or how do, you, how do you organize the growth of the organization? These are the practices of the around happening with the product and innovation. 